Hey guys, it's Mr. G and I'm just here in the living room hanging out with the Roomba. But you know what I like more than hanging out with my Roomba? Knowledge. Coding on top of the World Trade Center. I hope you guys enjoyed that intro. One of my friends was able to get me into a co-working space in the World Trade Center, so I decided to go there and figure out how to code a binary search algorithm close to the top. Binary search is pretty easy in theory, but coding it is a little bit more involved. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I figured out one way to do it. The binary search algorithm can tell us the position of a number that we're looking for in a sorted list of numbers. So if you remember from the previous video, we were able to find a value and or a number in an unsorted list. For binary search, all of the items in the list must be sorted. And the strategy is to look at the median position or the midpoint of the list of sorted values. For example, if n is the number of items that I have, what I can do is n plus 1 and then divide that by 2. So 13 plus 1 divided by 2 and that will equal 14 divided by 2 which equals 7. So the seventh position is my median value. So 49 in this case. But I'm actually not going to be looking at the values until later on. I'm just going to be looking at the positions and talking about the positions throughout this video. If we're looking for a number and this number or the value at position 7 is too big, then we could eliminate all the values that are equal to or greater than this midpoint value. So for example, if we're looking for the number, let's say 10, and I look at 49 first, I know that 49 is too big, so I could eliminate this half. I don't have to look at those anymore. If I look at the number at the midpoint and it's smaller than what I'm looking for, then that means my number that I'm looking for is a little bit bigger and I can eliminate this half of the values. It's also possible that the value at the midpoint is exactly what we're looking for, so we should check that too. So if I'm looking for 49 in this list and the first number I check is 49, then we found our value. When I was trying to figure this out by hand, I was a bit confused about what to do with a list containing an even number of values. So using the formula for finding the median, let's say I have six values. So let me just use this first half. I'm gonna be looking over here. Using my formula, I should look at position three and a half because six plus one divided by two equals seven divided by two, which equals 3.5, but there is no value at position three and a half. So I decided that I'm always going to round down. Whenever I'm looking at a median for an even number of places, I'm always going to round down to the third. So this is going to be the one I'll look at first. On the other half, if I'm looking at position 10.5, obviously that doesn't exist. So I'm going to round down and look at position 10. So you see, if I have an odd number 
of values to look at, it's much easier to find the middle value. But if I have an even number, I kind of have to round down, and that makes my lists uneven. So now, if I look at position 3, and 10 is greater than what I'm looking for, then I'm down to just two values. So I can't really do the median of two here. I have to like look at each one. Whereas if I look at position three and it's smaller than what I'm looking for or less than, then I can look at four, five, six and figure out the median of that, which is position five. And then if it's too big, then it must be position four. If it's too small, then it must be at position six. We're going to need a formula that allows us to determine the median for every list and continues to work once we start eliminating half the list. So whether the list is even or odd, we need a formula that works for all of these. So my plan was to determine the median for each half list using the biggest and smallest positions still available. So I name them upper and lower. So the first time around, let's call it round one, my upper value is 13, and my lower value is 1, and I'm getting that from the positions here. So I'm looking at these two. Here's my upper, and here's my lower. Now I would look at the median, which is at position 7, and let's say that it's not the value. So it could either be too small or too big, that value at position 7. So in round 2, there are two possibilities for upper and lower. My smallest positions could either be 1 and my upper position could be 6 or my lowest position, my lower position is 8 and my upper position is 13. So you see how in round 2 I can either have 13 and 8 or I could have 6 and 1 as my range of values. Now it could only be one of these when I compare the midpoint to the number that I'm looking for. So it can't be both, it's only going to be one of them. But now I know what's possible in the second round. I also can figure out what the median value is for both halves. So for example, if I'm looking at the one through six half, it's easy to use the original formula of m plus one divided by two, but in the eight through 13 half, I have to try something different. So if I always subtract the upper by the lower values and divide that by two, then I would do 13 minus eight divided by two. Okay, and that gives me five divided by two, which equals 2.5. Now that doesn't really help me if I'm looking for position 10. Because remember I said I was always going to round down. If I was to do the actual median, it would be position 10.5, but there is no value there. So I'm gonna round down. I have 2.5, but I need to get to 10. It just so happens that if I add the lower value, the lowest position value, so 2.5 plus eight, I get really close. I get to 10 and a half. And if I always round down, then I am going to get to 10 every single time. Now, the way to round down in a programming language is to use the floor function or the floor reporter block. So if I do the floor of 10.5, I will always get 10. If I do the floor of 10.9, I would get 10 as well because it always rounds down. Now, I need to see if I could use this modified formula for numbers 1 through 6. So when I do 6 minus 1 divided by 2, I get 5 divided by 2, which equals 2.5 as well. Now, if I do the same exact thing that I did just before, and I add the lower value or the lower position, which happens to be 1, then I'm going to get to 3.5. And if I do the floor of 3.5, it's going to equal 3. So position 3 is the new median that I'm gonna be looking at, or like the modified median, because I'm not gonna be looking in between three and four. Just like when I did the floor of 10.5, the value was 10, and that is exactly what I was looking for. Assuming that I still haven't found the number I was looking for, in the third round, our ranges are going to be one and two, four through six, eight through nine, or 11 through 13. So these are gonna be my round three values that I'm gonna be using in my formula. If we narrow down our search to just two numbers, we really have to look at both of these values. So in the case of one or two, 
or 8 or 9, we really have to look at both values. If we have three or more values still left, then we can use our midpoint formula again from before. How do I know when I have just two values left? Well, if I subtract the upper and the lower positions and get one, then it's time to look at both values. So if I subtract nine and eight and that equals one, or if I subtract two and one and that equals one, then that means it's time to look at both values because we've narrowed down our search to just two values. Otherwise, we keep using the formula to determine and look at the midpoint. If we're looking at four through six, our midpoint formula works perfectly to give us five. Or if we're looking at 11 through 13, then our midpoint formula works perfectly and gives us 12. My plan already sounds like a loop. Specifically, it sounds like a job for the repeat until block. So I'm going to use my formula for determining midpoint until the upper position minus the lower position equals 1. At that point, I'm going to check to see both values to see if either matches what we're looking for. Now there's one last problem to solve. How can I change the upper and lower position values as I eliminate half of the list each round? With my original list of numbers, if my midpoint of 7 is too big, then I should set my new upper equal to 6, which just so happens to be the midpoint minus 1. And my lower didn't change. But if my midpoint is too small, then I gotta eliminate this half of the list, this left half of the list, and what I can do is set my new lower equal to 8, which happens to be the mid plus 1. And the upper doesn't change. Then I could use my formula and come up with a new midpoint for the set of numbers that are left. My pseudocode is really starting to come along, but let's put it together and write it out. So the first thing I have to do is set the upper and lower variables to equal the length of the original list and 1, respectively. Second, we're going to repeat the following until there are just two positions left to check. I said before that it's probably going to be a repeat until block. So we're going to repeat the following until the upper minus the lower equals 1. Because that tells us that there are only two positions left to check. Inside of this block, we're going to calculate the mid using the formula we came up with before. Then we're going to check to see if the mid is greater than the number we're looking for. So num is the number that we're looking for. And if it is, we have to set the upper to mid minus 1. If the mid is less than the number we're looking for, then we have to set the lower equal to mid plus 1. Once we're done with this, or once we repeat this until we get down to two values, we're going to then check the value at the lower, and if that isn't a match, we'll check the value at the upper, and if that isn't a match, we're going to return to the user that the number is not in the list. If at any point we have a match, we have to return the position we're looking at, which should be the midpoint of a set of values. And there it is. But I forgot one last thing. I really should check to see if the midpoint equals the number that we're looking for. So we're going to do that before we recalculate the upper or lower values. Because if we found it, then we don't have to recalculate. So over here, after we calculate the middle, we should check to see if the middle or if the midpoint equals the number we're looking for. And if it does, we're going to return the mid and that is going to tell us what position the value we're looking for is at. I realize that this might look a little confusing, but once I come back to Snap in the next video, you guys are going to see how I was able to implement my pseudocode using actual Snap code and create the binary search algorithm.